Free. But I've mastered that style. It's like the five deadly venoms. So all he had to do was get next to a nigga like that. He could destroy it. that. Real. We plan to take the same strategy we use with Death Row West. Mind over matter. Taking all our weaknesses and making it into our strength. That all these people talk about an East Coast, West Coast war. They like the Judas was to Jesus. They only here to cause confusion. We here to bring money and to bring change. They here to cause confusion. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game. This ain't no game. If this was chess, we'd be yelling checkmate three years ago because we've been beat these It's not a game. Eddie Hearn waving the white flag says fighters' purses are out of control with the zone. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Vimo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Head over to Patreon. I got some things coming up for Patreon members and YouTube channel members. You don't want to miss it. Should be fun. Should be good times. Link in the description for Patreon. As far as YouTube channel members, you could become a member by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. Great way to support the channel. Another way to support the channel is to click the ESPN Plus link in the description in the affiliate section and sign up for ESPN Plus. It's an app with a ton of content help you get through this quarantine. They got exclusives. They got originals. They got BTS like scenes from Michael Jordan documentary that didn't actually make the documentary. They got archive fights. Pacquiao and Mayweather, Pacquiao and Cotto. They've just released a ton more fights, UFC fights. You know, they got classic UFC fights up there. And you can get ESPN Plus as a standalone app or you can combine it. ESPN Plus, get the bundle. ESPN Plus, Hulu and Disney Plus, all three apps, one price. That's $12.99. And it does help the channel. Now that that is out the way, if this was chess, we would have been yelling checkmate three motherfucking years ago because we been beat these bitches. Ego Valley has returned. You know, I was first I was going to do an unpack to this, but I had to come back in the form of Ego Valley. I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Drink a Hennessy. So buckle up. We got to talk about it. I'm I'm ready to go. So I'm going to jump right into it. You know, grab your popcorn, smash the like button. We about to go in. So, Eddie Hearns. He is quoted. You guys see. Link will be in the description. Boxing Scene has an article. Eddie Hearns says that boxers' purses are completely out of control. And it's part my fault. And the zone's fault. Right? This is what he had to say. Well, I know that Bob Arum has made it quite clear publicly that it is his intention, really, to bring purses down, Hearn said. And I have to say, Chris, the you know, the guy interviewing him, purses have got, I mean, you know the business, they've gotten completely out of control. And listen, part of it's my fault and DeZone's fault. They had they've had to come in, they've had to make some noise. Bob blamed me recently. The other day I was on the phone with him and he said, Well, it's all your fault anyway. And before you it was Al Heyman and you know, right? He says, but it's like, we don't want to stop paying fighters great money. They deserve it. But we just want to make sure is delivering value, not value for us, but value for our customers and our customers and our broadcasters. So, you know, we have been in a stage lately where you're signing a fighter. If I'm signing a fighter to match your boxing USA or DAZN, you lure them in, Chris, don't you? With the first easy fight, you know, Oh, look at that money. Well, I've only got a top 15 guy. Great. Now, when you get to a stage where it's opponents to be agreed, we've got to be in a situation where you know we're not fair. We're not unfair. But it's not going to come down to matchroom, really. It's going to come down to the broadcasters. It says, moving forward, Hearn expects DAZN and other outlets to demand more competitive fights from promoters when required to pay premium prices for content. It'll be harder Hearn believes for higher profile fighters to secure substantial paydays if they're unwilling to fight top opponents. 
you know, and I'm not going to read this whole thing. That's the part that I want to cherry pick. Now you get to hear from Ego Veli. So Eddie Hearn is saying it's partly his fault and partly DAZN's fault. It is all their fault. And I'm going to explain why. And I'll prove it. It is all their fault because they came in the game, Eddie Hearn particularly, and he came in with such a posh, pompous attitude when DAZN was being announced. And it was his idea. It was his ingenuity or, you know, approach to bring up money at every wake and every turn as it related to boxing. If you listen to he's had to calm down, obviously, because they're running out of money. And I made a video about it. So make sure you guys take a listen to that. But the zone is looking for. Let's see if I can pull it up. Look, previously, before the pandemic, DAZN was seeking $500 million in new funding. DAZN reportedly searching for a cash infusion. So this was before the pandemic, right? So can you imagine with the pandemic, which has hurt all of business, right? How they're doing right now because you know they have had a drop off in subscribers because they have no live content like watch for example the zone.com right boom their bread and butter was the live event they came in the game saying bye bye pay-per-view right big fights any device one price stream a stack lineup of fights during a pandemic you can't stream uh, a lineup of fights it says you get Canelo. His fight with Billy Joe Saunders that was never announced, by the way, was canceled. Triple G, he got kicked out of the snack program and allegedly has a calf injury. And he says he doesn't want to fight Canelo coming off of this pandemic. He would rather fight Camille Sersmeta, a guy with 20, 21 fights and five knockouts that nobody's damn heard of. Joshua, his fight got canceled and pushed back you know, or postpone, whatever you want to call it, with Q-Brat Pulev. So they keep clout chasing Tyson Fury, even though Tyson Fury has a contractual trilogy fight with Deontay Wilder and many others. Look, so who's paying $100 for a year, right? And it, the perk is full access to all live and on-demand content. Get all fights. They, they have not ran any fights since about March, right? So it's been several months of stagnant, you know, I'm, I'm assuming no growth. The zone's obviously secretive with their numbers, so we don't get to look under the hood to get to see exactly how much of a dip. So, you know, this spells trouble. Once again, before the pandemic, billionaire Lynn Blavitnik or whatever, the owner of the zone was looking to raise five hundred million dollars. That was before the pandemic. So, like I said, you can imagine the pandemic has put them in a worse position because it's done that to all business, all businesses, restaurant businesses, you know, um, coffee shops, movie theater, all of that has suffered during the pandemic. Look, awful announcing. The zone reportedly searching for a cash infusion and possibly by selling the whole business. It's tough to be the Netflix of of sports when there aren't any sports oh my gosh that's a that's a hell of a that's a hell of a um subtext right there it's tough to be the quote netflix of sports when there aren't any sports the covid pandemic has hit many industries hard with sports and sports media near the top of the list within even just that sector however there are a few businesses that are even more vulnerable everything i've been saying the prodigal son has returned ego veli Everything I've been saying well before this article was written. The zone certainly qualifies there. The fledgling streaming service built a brand and a subscriber base around expensive live sports rights. And without sports, there aren't many reasons for subscribers to hang around. For a business model in large part reliant on the stability of monthly revenue, that's dangerous. And the zone has already taken steps like furloughing live event staff. So they're basically, you know, 
don't have to pay them and you know got them off the books or, or they're they're technically still with the company but you know they're probably not getting paid they can file for unemployment and stuff and planning to withhold rights payments which i've talked about all of this to leagues that are shut down and according to the financial times report today DAZN's leadership is exploring even more drastic options in an effort to stay afloat up to and including being willing to put the whole business up for sale wow fledgling streaming service DAZN. look somebody i don't know who this is but they're verified says the business that made little sense before the pandemic makes even less sense now good luck investors right it says online sports group DAZN is racing to secure its financial future with billionaire owner Lynn Blavitnik exploring options to raise money from selling an equity stake to the entire company as a business is hit hard in the pandemic. The person, whoever this is, you know, they're verified. So, you know, no disrespect. I don't I'm not familiar with that person. That name says the thing they, they're leaving good comments. though. it says this thing was losing hundreds of million dollars before the pandemic in the hopes of building a subscriber base that would eventually be sticky enough to hang around longer term rights cycles make that very hard and now who would want to take this bet on <laughs> and someone said i'm told their outlay is one billion a year choices are current owner shows appetite to continue pumping in more money new investor provides new cash or suddenly get millions of subscribers and turn a profit none of those things are happening right now and this is um you know i guess another insider wow it's not a, in, a inviable position to be in and the billionaire Blavatnik and the rest of the zone's leadership might have to make some very hard choices in the coming weeks. Not only is the timeline for the return of major sports murky, but in the event of a massive economic downturn, the zone and other services like that might face heavy subscriber losses. On top of that, there's a decent chance the virus makes a return at some point this fall or winter given all that is not hard to see why everything is on the table and then the original article i'll put that in the, the link but i already made a video about it wow desperate times call for desperate measures look man this is this is looking bad 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 right now back to eddie Hearns. first of all like i said at the beginning of this video if this was chess we would have been yelling checkmate three years ago because we've been beat. Dude. This is literally everything I told you from the zones failed business model. When it first started at first, I gave it the, you know, me being objective. I posed it as a question. I said, hmm, you're signing Canelo for this record breaking money, you know, and then you got Golovkin and he's getting a crazy contract with equity. And I'm like, man. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but this don't make sense. How are you, how are you paying, you know, basically like half a billion to two fighters, not including Joshua. That's just Canelo and Triple G. You know, you're giving Canelo 36.5 million a pop. And it just didn't make sense to me. You know, was, and then you got Joshua who that's why he's fighting in Saudi Arabia because they were able to raise a crazy amount of money for that fight because of the you know the saudi kingdom they put up the money for it that's why they took it out and i don't i think joshua was kind of scared to fight in new york but anyway back to eddie Hearn. he's saying fighters purses are out of control wow 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 i feel no pity for eddie Hearn or the zone because how does it take a little youtuber like myself to see these gaping holes in your your philosophy and your business model and i made several videos i did several live streams and i talked about this you know what eddie hearn brought a weird energy from boxing fans a lot of uk guys who didn't at the point even have the zone you know and they still to this point don't have it because we're in a p pandemic even though they were considering going to the uk i mean right before the zone uk was to launch this pandemic happened out of nowhere the zone curse strikes again right but eddie hearn brought this weird energy and he had all these radical idiot fans who were saying the most asinine things saying aha 
PBC's going out of business and Eddie Hearn was saying Showtime Boxing will be out of business in a year and Steven Espinoza's jealous and salty. You know, uh, keep in mind Steven Espinoza and Showtime who aired Joshua's fights and helped make him bigger in America, you know, which DAZN hasn't done because he the, his only fight, you know, was Andy Ruiz and he got slaughtered in America, right? So all these things and Eddie Hearn brought this weird energy and weirdo fans who would come to my videos and say, oh, you're lying, DAZN hater, get used to it, DAZN's the future. And now Eddie Hearn is crying about purses being out of control, right? And we're going to go deep because this you're not dealing with regular ego. You got ego veli. <laughs> Outlaw, right? This is Eddie Hearn about a year ago. So I told you, you you're going to buckle up for this one. What is this world we live in? Hold on one second, y'all. He's one minute. Always one minute. A man. You're going to get another chunk of subscribers, but you're going to have great retention because you're not going to leave. You know, if they've, and by the way, it's not just Canelo and Anthony Joshua. It's 32 match shows. No, it's now Golden Boy shows. It's three weight classes, yeah. the World Boxing Super Series. It's Bellator, it's Combat Americas, and now a whole load of other new sports coming over the next couple of months. So it's like these guys, they can mess around. Right there was a lie. Eddie Hearn says it's a whole load of other sports coming around. What other sports? Darts? You know, I'm like, listen, we did our deal and we're very pleased with how it's gone. And we're slowly, slowly, you know, breaking into the market. They're like, give them the money. Give everyone the money. I'm like, no, no, no. Slowly. Because then, if you give them the money then, next time it's going to get more expensive. And it's just going to get out of control. So we're trying to do, make the right business moves. But these guys, they don't want to wait. You know, so the Canelo fight came, the, the opportunity came come up. Boom. Straight in there. Crash, bang, wallet. Not one fight. I'm interested in one fight. Do the lot. Give them the money. Done. You know, but that's, that's how they operate. They're dangerous people. Dangerous people. I would be petrified if I was in this market and I wasn't with DAZN. Honestly. I mean, yeah. This man just said that the zone was just throwing out cash. They seen the opportunity with Canelo and they're like, just throw him money. Just throw him money. Oh, these people are dangerous because they're willing to, to bet it all. He's bragging. He's bragging about throwing unnecessary money to make fights that ultimately aren't even that big. Right. Oh, Canelo, just throw him money. Yeah. These people are dangerous. He just said he would be petrified if he was a competitor. Like, I'm assuming PBC, Al Heyman, Steven Espinoza, Bob Arum, top ranked ESPN. He's saying he would be petrified because we're just willing and dealing and throwing so much money at the fighter to the point where I guess he was trying to talk it up and say that the competitors should be shook because they got too much money. ESPN have got deep pockets. A lot of money. They've got a lot of money. <laughs> but they don't no have problem. Problem. No problem. But pretty much everything. The private wealth investment in, in the gold. He just keeps saying that these guys got a lot of money, a lot of money. People behind design. You know, the ability to just rock up another couple of billion and go, oh, I'm going to do this as well. You know, it's not coming through a board. It's just a guy, Lem Levant, who has a vision for sports, who will deliver whatever it takes if he is advised to by the people he believes in, i.e. John Skipper, who has got a proven track record as one of the best TV execs in the world. And Skipper looked at this and said, we need Canelo on the back. And after Boston, after Chicago, we had to fly to LA at seven o'clock in the morning and see Golden Boy. And that was a flight I really didn't want to take because I've been away for two weeks and I was so tired. But when John Skipper says we're going to LA to try and close the Canelo, I'm on the plane. And you closed it then? Yeah, uh, like two days. It was papered. And you kept your mouth shut? Yeah, it, that was the hardest thing. <laughs> that was the hardest thing. <laughs> see? So, yeah, cool. Listen. It just means that the zone are the only people who are willing to put the money up for pay-per-view fights. Pay-per-view, you have to understand, pay-per-view is a really good thing, nice thing, for a broadcaster. Because it generates income for the broadcaster without you having to pay a rights fee. Yeah? So what the zone are doing is something no one's ever done before. It is bankrolling the rights fees that's gone missing 
through you know, because of the pay-per-view. So, for example, 1.1 million buyers for Canelo against Golovkin. 84.99, I don't know, call it $40 million generated by that pay-per-view for the, for the show. It's only going to put that out in a rights fee. That's unprecedented. <clears throat> and you haven't got to worry about maybe people won't buy it this time. Or maybe there'll be a technical problem and we've got to refund the pay-per-view. <coughs> Or maybe there's no hype in the build-up and all of a sudden it does 600,000. The money's there, it's banked. And that's what I'm talking about with Joshua Roller. If Showtime want to make an offer, I'm not, I'm not saying they're out of the run. But they better be putting up 30 or 40 million for that fight. Because the zone will. So... So, he just told you he's bragging about the zone's pockets. That's why I let you listen to it for so long. He's bragging about the zone's pocket, saying we got the deepest pocket. That's just that's one of the more mild Eddie Hearn interviews. He also said we have a billion dollar budget, a billion dollar war chest. No other competitor in my industry can compete with the zone's pocketbook. And in the words of Alanis Morissette, isn't it ironic that this is the same person now saying that people's purses are out of control? I could have told you that from the beginning. Again, Canelo's a good fighter, but you got to understand this. Canelo doesn't speak English or he doesn't feel comfortable enough speaking English in America to hype up a fight. And despite if he speaks English or not, Canelo's demeanor, he's really all business. You have never really seen Canelo as a showman where he's you know, doing what Adrian Broner does, cracking a couple wise jokes and things like that. That's never really been his get up. That has never really been his deal to, um, you know, have these insane press conferences like Floyd Mayweather or Conor McGregor, you know, and his lit. That's just never been his M.O. So you're paying for the Canelo brand. And like I said, from the beginning, you've kind of overstated his value he's popular for sure but his ability to sell is not as great plus canelo also has certain diva tendencies where whatever he says goes which is also a conflict because then that doesn't mean the fights that the fans want or the zone wants in certain situations for example the zone wanted canelo versus Gennady golovkin three last year but for whatever reason, Canelo was off that. And Canelo was like, nah, I'm not really trying to fight Gennady Golovkin. I don't care about him. I don't want to give him no more paychecks. So there was a, you know, obviously a conflict of interest because that's what DAZN wanted. And they have still not even put on a fight that I don't even think that's going to be the biggest fight anymore. But that would have probably been the biggest fight that they put. Because you have to understand, Anthony Joshua and Ruiz only became big because Joshua looked horrible. But he was really brought in to lose. Andy Ruiz was a five, six week replacement and some perceived, quote unquote, fat guy because Gerald Miller failed a drug test. So the rematch became anticipated only because of the outcome. But that wasn't supposed to be a big fight. That's why people were at the end surprised and, and you know, watching the highlight clips when when those went on uh, DAZN's YouTube and stuff because people weren't checking for the fight in real time. So I don't think that fight generated that many subscribers like that because it was really an afterthought until Joshua got beat. And then people said, oh, OK, and then what they did was took the rematch out of the market that it could have been more successful in, you know, outside of just a site fee, you know, in terms of growing his own sus subscribers, because by putting in Saudi Arabia, what they did is limit the amount of people who would probably legally buy it because it came on at 2.30 in the afternoon, 1 p.m. or whatever, based on the time zone difference. Horrible decisions. Horrible decisions from zone, And now you have the first point of contact that I can remember, right? Eddie Hearn. And he's saying that fighters are getting paid too much mm -mm -mm. but before previously it was all about the money it was all about how much money they have 
So this came along and it was an absolute. rights deal in the history of the sport and more importantly bigger rights budget than HBO and Showtime put together annually so we shouldn't fail Eddie my, my number one question he just said we shouldn't fail and smiled he said we got a bigger budget than Showtime and HBO annually so we shouldn't fail hmm. and more importantly bigger rights budget than HBO and Showtime put together annually. So we shouldn't fail. Eddie, my, my number one question is this. There's been a lot of uh, entities that have tried, I don't say come over and take over the sport, but they have their own platforms, their own deals. So my question is with this, are you an entity unto yourself or will you play with other, in terms of other promoters making cross promotions and trying to make the best fights possible? I, I have a history of working with other promoters and other networks. So my ego is not yet out of control. I haven't been stabbed by the bitterness knife of boxing yet, mm -hmm. which will happen in years to come. Yeah. But at the moment, I like to work with everybody. I just like to make great fights. So here you have a platform that is built by a fan for the fans. And the difference is, is we're not coming on air at 10 p.m. because there's a film on at 8 p.m. No, we can do the build-up show. We can show the entire card. Mm -hmm. This is 16 live events from the U.S. This is 16 of our massive shows from the U.K. as well. Other big announcements coming from a boxing content perspective over the next few weeks on this platform as well. But this isn't just a boxing platform. This is a sports platform. Mm -hmm. Wait till you see the other sports they're going to acquire. So that will come in. He said, wait till you see the other sports that they're going to acquire. Now, keep in mind, this was two years ago. This was filmed May 10th. You know, and it's the end of May this year. This was the end of May, or this was May tenth, two thousand eighteen. That this this is when the the interview was published. And he says, "Wait till you see all these other sports. What other sports? What did they really get? They already had like Bellator. So what? You know, what crazy sports did they get? They don't have NBA in America. They don't have NHL. They don't have MLB. They don't have NFL. So what were they supposed to acquire? That was just once again." Car salesman Eddie Hearn, wishful thinking. Time, but thankfully, they have identified boxing as a sport that has serious potential. And that is why they have given the eight year commitment and obviously a lot of money as well. What do you think is the main difference between your venture and what the PBC tried to do, let's say, three years ago? Well, they didn't have a platform, they bought airtime. That's, that's the first thing. So they had no broadcaster paying them the money. They had an investment group that gave them the money to acquire fighters, which they did very well. But they didn't make progress with that money. We can't make the same mistakes. The difference is we have a platform behind us. So we have rights fees. Now, we don't have an amount of money given to, to build a brand to sign fighters. We have rights fees to deliver shows. That's the difference. So with, like I say, bigger rights fees than HBO and Showtime put together, if I fail, I've really done a bad job. Eddie, my final question is that we... See, he took a slight at PBC and says, if I failed, I've really done a bad job. All right, so the zone. This is brand new article. You know that was five ten two thousand eighteen. The interview you just heard. This article was written five twenty three twenty twenty. Two years later. You know, two years and a couple weeks. The zone reportedly searching for cash infusion, possibly by selling the whole business. <laughs> I might have to break this video down in parts because I don't I don't want to give y'all too much to think about, but we going to be spending a lot of quality time together. See you later, sweetie, honey, sugar. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.